In this video, let's work on this airplane seats booking system. Let's go to our Visual Studio. And this is the code that we previously wrote in for simulating a web server. And the part that we really need to change is about this process input function right here. So let's change this to process booking. Let's replace this as well. Okay, so now we need to think about whether tickets are available or not. Let's create a variable at the top and we're going to say available tickets. And usually airplane is pretty big. Maybe you have 100 seats, 300, 500 seats. But let's just imagine it's a small airplane that only have 10 seats available for booking so that we can try and run into different scenarios. Now, when we're processing the booking, of course, we're going to use this thread sleep to simulate a longer processing time. But here, we can't just output the result. We have to tell whether tickets are available or not. First of all, if the input is B. Well, actually, let's, uh, let's change the message first. So server is running. And then let's enter a carriage return and then say type B to book a ticket. Another carriage return and then say type C to cancel. And let's maybe add another carriage return at the end so that the messages are nicely separated from our input. We are going to check whether the input is letter B or letter C. So if it's letter B, then we do uh, the booking, otherwise we do the canceling. So if the input is C, so it's automatically actually generating the code for me. Now inside here, I want to check whether the available tickets are there. Right? So if it's greater than zero, then that means we have tickets to book. And first of all, we want to take away a ticket right, as soon as possible to make sure that uh, tickets are decremented. And then we are going to, let's write a empty line first. And then we're going to write another line. We're going to just say that your seat is booked and we can output the number of seats available. Here, available tickets. We can say seats are still available, something like that. And then here, if we're canceling, then we are doing the same thing, but here, Instead of decrement, we're going to increment the counter. And we're going to say your seat is canceled. Or maybe say your booking is in available tickets. Available seats are, are available. Okay, looks like we have a extra curly brace. So let's delete that. So now we implemented the code without locking mechanism. Therefore, we're going to run into synchronization issues but I can't reproduce it because typing on the console is just too slow and the chances of encountering risk conditions are very low. But if you have lots and lots of people online and there's going to run into coincidence where two people are booking at the same time, therefore we will have to use a lock because as you know, the process booking thing here is in a thread, right? So there could be multiple threads running at the same time that is executing this process booking function. And because here we are reading the shared resource, which is this common variable here, this common variable is common through all of the threads, right? So this is the shared resource between all of the threads. So here we're reading, here we are reading and writing. And then uh, actually, I think we need to also check Okay, so if the available tickets is less than 10, then we are going to increment. Okay, we don't want to add more tickets to the system. So we can do this. So here again, we're reading. Reading is also pretty important because we are going to make decisions based on the number that we read. And here there's a reading and a writing, one after another. So therefore, all of these are considered a part of the critical section, except the, the output. Output is just for dis display purpose, that, but we can't get them out of the, the section, right? They're going to be part of our critical section. So if you want to be really accurate about it, you can use 
lock this way. So I'm going to lock lock object, which we will have to declare it right here. So we're going to say object and we're going to say tickets lock, or you can call it seats lock or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to come over here. So if you want to be accurate, I'm going to use this tickets lock around this if statement and then another lock around here. But it doesn't really matter because things run really fast. We're just comparing the input with letter B and here with input with letter C. So we can apply the lock this way. Take its lock, close that. And then I'm going to move this into the curly braces of the lock. So this becomes the body of the lock. And because we're applying a lock around the critical section this way, we're guaranteed that there's maximum one thread that is accessing the critical section. So this is going to avoid our race conditions. So let's run our application and see what happens now. Okay, it says server is running, type B to book a ticket, type C to cancel. So uh, let's try C first. And nothing is happening. That's actually by design. We didn't spit up any message if the available tickets is uh, greater to 10. So that's why it looks like nothing is happening. Now, now if we say B, then after two seconds, it says your seat is booked. Nine seats are still available. Now, if I keep typing B, for some reason, I just typed 10 different times. So let me try to do that more. Now you can see that nothing is happening anymore because if we look at our code, here, if available takes are greater than zero, then we're booking. Otherwise, nothing is happening. So maybe to make it clearer, we are going to do uh, something like this. So we're going to add a else statement here, and we're going to say console the right line uh, tickets are not available. Something like that. Right line tickets are not available. Tickets are not available. Maybe add another one here. I'm just going to say error. You cannot cancel a booking, something like that. Okay, run the application again. Now, if I say C at this moment, it says error. You cannot cancel a booking at this time. If I enter B, so this time let me enter B for many, many times. So, so I entered a lot, uh, and you can see that your seat is a booked nine available eight available and it's decremental decrementing until zero seats are available and then the message changed to tickets are not available at this moment if i say b then after two seconds it's going to say tickets are not available but if i type on c then it says your booking is canceled and one seat is available i do another c and two seats are available so i'm going to do a lot of c and see what happens so it's going to add until we reach error so because I cannot cancel a booking at this time anymore because it's already 10 seats. It's full already. Now I can continue booking. So I can book and cancel and book and cancel and book and cancel. So if we come back and read the message, so I booked and then booked again, booked again, booked again. Now it's trying to process the cancellation. So it adds, so six seats available, then it adds to it, becomes seven and eight, and then it's processing the booking again. So it decreases, decreases, and then increases. So you can see that the process is going pretty smoothly with the lock. So that's how I implemented with a lock keyword. I hope you had fun implementing this tickets booking system. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.